Hi everyone, I'm back, but this time I am on vacation. I thought I'd still throw a video together for all of you who might be interested. I've gotten a couple requests over the last few videos for videos specifically on one of the secondary lesions or secondary change that we talked about, and that is scale. For those of you that follow me on Twitter and follow my tutorials on Twitter, feel free to take a look there. We actually have a tutorial specifically on scale because some of the information that is presented here today is a reflection of the stuff that was there before. Now, as a reminder, scale is one of the secondary lesions. And if you haven't seen the other videos yet, I would encourage you to start with the Derm 101 series with first the primary lesion video, then the secondary lesion and secondary change video. So scale is one of the secondary changes that can happen to a primary lesion. And remember that whenever we see scale, it means that there's probably something happening in the epidermis of the rash or of the lesion. If we were to do a biopsy and you looked at the skin from top to bottom, there's gonna be some inflammation or some activity in the epidermal area. While this may sound a little bit crazy, the particular characteristic of scale can actually help us with the diagnosis that we're dealing with. And now remember the types of scale that I'm going to describe today are all rules of thumb. There can certainly be nuances to this and you have to take the whole picture into account. Now we're gonna focus in on different adjectives and types of scale that can give you even more information. So for example, if we see greasy scale, so if you look at scale and it just looks like there's a little bit of a sebaceous or an oily component to it, especially if it's centered around kind of the eyebrows or maybe at the hairline or around the nose, then that probably means that we're dealing with something like seborrheic dermatitis. Now, the way I describe it to my patients, it's almost like dandruff on steroids. You get a lot of flaking in the scalp, you get a lot of flaking on the face, and seborrheic dermatitis can actually happen in conjunction with psoriasis. So we call that SIBO psoriasis when we see both of them. Okay, a slight change in venue because there's a lot more going in the background and hopefully you can hear me a little bit better now. So the next one that we'll talk about is the gritty scale that we see with actinic keratoses. Actinic keratoses are precancers that can turn into squamous cell carcinomas over time at a very low rate. We'll often treat these precancers with liquid nitrogen when we're in clinic in order to try to prevent the, the progression to squamous cell carcinoma. Now you might imagine that actinic keratoses happen in photodistributed areas the most because that's what predisposes us to skin cancer, UV light. And so for that reason, we actually use scale quite frequently to differentiate between actinic keratoses and sometimes seborrheic dermatitis because actinic keratoses have gritty scale and sebderm has greasy scale. The next type of scale that we should talk about is micaceous scale. Micaceous scale means that it looks like mica, which is that white flaky rock that some of you may have seen before. And micaceous scale is usually used to describe psoriasis. We'll often say that micaceous scale is overlying a salmon colored plaque for the classic description of psoriasis. A reminder that in darker skin types, the erythema seen in psoriasis is no longer as apparently visible. This is where knowing what the scale looks like is very helpful since it would still appear micaceous even in darker skinned individuals. The next type of scale that I'll describe is ichthyotic scale. Ichthyosis just means fish-like. So usually what we say when we say ichthyotic scale is that it looks almost like the scale of a fish often on the legs. And this is usually what we see in ichthyosis vulgaris, which is an autosomal dominant disease that causes very dry skin and this characteristic scaling that we see on the legs. This clinical example of ichthyosis vulgaris in a darker skinned individual is quite severe, extending all the way up to the torso. And one final adjective to describe scale that we can talk about, and that would be pityriasiform scale. So pityriasiform scale is the type of scale that we see with things like pityriasis rosea or pityriasis rubra polaris. And this type of scale is usually described as almost looking like oat bran or a branny scale. This one's the hardest one for me to actually appreciate, but certainly accepted in the literature. And this is one of those where the more you see, the more likely you are to recognize it. So in addition to describing the quality of the scale with those adjectives we just talked about, such as greasy, gritty, ichthyosiform, micaceous, and pityriasiform, we can also talk about where it is in relation to the primary lesion. If we see scale that's on the leading edge of an annular plaque, that might actually mean that it's more likely to be something like tinea corporis. Whereas that same annular plaque, if we see that there's scale on the trailing edge, that might mean that it's more likely to be erythema annularis centrifugum, which is a figurate erythema that's associated with tinea, but not actually tinea itself. 
And the last one that I'll mention is something that we call collarettes of scale. Collarettes of scale means that there's little circles of scale, which really are footprints that have been left behind by a prior vesicle or bulla. So what that tells us is that there probably used to be a vesicle bullous eruption in the area, but now those have all popped and just left these little footprints or collarettes of scale. It's kind of a neat way where the physical exam gives us a hint as to what happened in the past, even though we might not be seeing it right now at this instant. And that's it. That's all the information I was going to cover today, but I think more importantly than trying to actually remember every bit and piece of information regarding different adjectives or descriptors of scale, it's important to realize that many physicians will just say that they see a scaly rash and move on from there, not realizing that there's a lot of information to be gleaned just from that little bit of secondary change that can really make or break your diagnosis. Hopefully I've shown you why it's important to know your dermatologic physical exam, your morphology terms, because that can make a big difference when it comes to treatment for your patients. Thanks again for joining me today. If you thought this video was helpful, please like below. If you find all this information that I'm sharing with you to be of interest, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. The last thing I'll mention is that again, if you are on Twitter and you follow me already, thank you for following me there. And I hope that the tutorials that I put out there are helpful for you. If you aren't already following me, then take a look at the link that I put in the comments below. Hopefully that's another source of information for you as you progress through your journey in the medical field. See you later.